we just had this this show on uh, focusing on on student engagement. I think we had a very robust conversation, uh, as we said, off air. What is one question that you wish I asked that I didn't ask? Because I think we got to a lot of them, but I still I'm I know at least two of the three of you very well. What's one question you wish I asked that I didn't ask? I just wondered if maybe um, what. What does it, what does student engagement? Well, we know it looks the same, but how does it manifest? Maybe a little bit uh, across different settings, and what are possible ways to go about um, addressing those uh, among you know among elementary, middle, and high school? Maybe. Yeah, that's a good discussion, right? Ross. You probably have research behind this too, because we do know that research has shown that student engagement diminishes as the kids get older, right? So um, it's really super high in kindergarten, but it even starts to go down first, second, third grade. Part of it might be because of testing and accountability and those kind of pieces, but I don't think that's the only reason why, why it diminishes, but we do know it diminishes after that. Would that be fair to say, Russ? Yeah, you're right on with that. It's funny because in my notes, um, to Ron's point, I had, discussion of elementary engagement in primary level. We just started doing research on pre-K stuff the past couple of years, because now I'm a grandpa of two and God knows they have a voice. Oh, amen to that. Um, so I want to learn more about that, but it was interesting. And, and Peter, you alluded to it when you talked about being a principal at the elementary level, yeah. but our default, even around student voice, is always middle school, high school, high school, because mm. we can kind of wrap our heads around. But what does that look like at the primary level? And if we did a better job at the primary level with these kids thinking about their role in engagement, things might look differently. And that's part of go to Jante's thing. That's a cultural shift there. Um, but I think that's a whole separate show of in and of itself. But I had the exact same thing about with well, just a question mark. And I know we can't cover everything. The other piece I think that. Again, I don't think you could have asked it differently, Peter. And I say this with immense respect, as you know. I, you did a brilliant job, brilliant, because there's endless amounts of stuff to cover. Mm. Um, I, I think another separate component of this is, what's the role of the school board in this? Because mm. they hold a lot of keys in this. And I they allegedly- More now than ever. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I was thinking about that. You know, they, they allegedly represent the community, which is a cluster. They're supposed to support the teachers and these kids, which I'm not sure they ever do. And it's just, I don't know. I, I've never, I haven't had that conversation around engagement, but I think that would be an interesting thing to, to jump into. And, and again, I don't know how anyone would have responded to it, myself included, quite frankly. Yeah, I remember, you know, at the elementary level, when I first started teaching, I was teaching a high poverty city school outside of New York City. And I have 30 first graders. And um, yeah. my principal had been in the district for 50 years. He was in, he was in the district for 50 years. It was crazy. And uh, one of the things he was obvious, he was honestly very supportive because the first thing he asked is, so what do you need in your classroom? And I said, well, if it's not too much, I would really love to move out all of the desks and get tables and chairs. And he said, okay, we can do that. The custodian was not happy with me at that time, but much to Jante's po point from earlier, that's where I learned as a principal, how do you really support your teachers to make sure that you're a part of this, right? It's not just right. teachers need to do it. It's, it's how am I, I'm a part of this. How I could not support my teachers if I couldn't go into classrooms every day, right? So like, that's where I learned how to support them. But yeah, he, he allowed me to take out all of the, the desks and chairs and I put in tables and we did center-based learning and cooperative learning and all that kind of stuff. And student voice does start at a very young age. People would always look at me and say, well, you can't do that in first grade or first graders age. It's not age appropriate. First graders can't do that kind of thing. You know, first graders can't engage in conversations about learning. I'm like, yeah, they can. <laughs> Yeah. We're, we're the ones who might prevent them from doing it. So I would say much to what you all have said, I became a better teacher and a better administrator because of those students, because my students were the ones who kind of drove, oh, they really can do this. So we need to be able to do this next. Jante, what's a question you wish I asked that, uh, that I didn't? The correlation between parental involvement and student involvement. Mm -hmm. And, and, and even to dive deeper, community involvement in the school and how does that, and that, how does that correlate with student involvement? 
So I actually know part of the answer to this because I, <laughs> I actually just got this question the other day from Twitter and I asked the guy to email me so we could talk because he was actually asking about Hattie's research. And parental, um, I, call it, I call it family engagement because when I wrote a book called Collaborative Leadership, Six Influences That Matter Most, which Russ totally made fun of me about because I said they matter most and he just never let me forget it. <laughs> but one of, the thing, one of the things I did is I took what John referred to as parental involvement, and I called it family engagement because I think it's a more inclusive term. Yeah, and yeah. Um, so family engagement has a, like a high effect size, right? It's really impactful. 0 0.40 is a, what equates to a year's worth of growth for a year's input. This is like a 0 0.51. What he found though, is that a lack of parent, parent, what he is saying, what John has said in research is that a lack of parental engagement does make it harder, but it, it isn't the only factor to kind of keep in mind. So I'm gonna to try to say this correctly. Part of it is our perception of the kids who don't have parents that are engaged. Sometimes what happens, and I, I actually lived this as a teacher and a principal, it's easy to blame the parent for not being engaged. But what I had to realize as a teacher, first of all, is that I represented something that they might not have understood. So I'm this white guy who is a teacher in a diverse school and they kind of had, it, there were parents I had a perception that they weren't welcome in the school. Mm -hmm. So I had to go out of my way to make sure that I was welcoming them in, but it's also, as a principal, it was, how do I engage with parents? Is our communication just one-sided where I'm just saying, this is what you have to, you know, here's the newsletter of all the things you need to know. And this is what we all want you to know, or is it more dialogue? And there were things that we did when I was a principal where like with report cards, for example, parents learned very early on that, you know, if they go to a parent teacher conference, then the teacher hands the way we did it the parents are handed the report card and the teacher asks, do you have any questions? And the parents are like, I don't even know what questions to ask. So a week prior to parent teacher conferences, we actually sent the report cards home and I wrote a letter and I put possible questions that they could ask uh, when they go to a parent teacher conference. So part of the answer to, to your question, and it would have been really great to get into this, is the idea that it's not just about the parents who aren't involved. It's about why, it's about really, you talk about the culture of the school. It's about why aren't they involved? I remember a really powerful story of a principal that was talking to me and said, it took him something like two years to get a parent. There was a guy that would drop his kids off at school every day and he was out on the sidewalk. And the principal said, hey, come on in. Um, to my office so we can talk because the guy had a question and he said, no, I don't go into it. I don't go in there. And it was this very powerful, like what school represented to him. And he said it took two years for him to finally get the father to actually come into the school. So there's like, yeah. there are a lot of nuances, I think, where that's concerned. So yes, parental involvement can be very powerful, but I would also suggest to say that we can be hypocritical because sometimes when parents are too involved, then we start calling them helicopter parents and everything else yeah. too. So there's like, there's that balance, right? It's a great, that's a great topic. Yeah. Well, you know, what's funny too is, is kind of in juxtaposition with the data that we get when we ask the students and it doesn't matter where they're from. And this is so important. It doesn't matter what SES, where they're coming from. 96% say my parents care about my education, mm -hmm. right? Now, when we ask the teachers, do the parents care about the kids' education? That's somewhere in the 30, 40% range. So Peter, to your point, parents absolutely care. They just don't know how to care or in which way to care, or are they looking at care differently than we just think of caring, whether it's helping with homework, making sure that they're eating and those kinds of things. But it's, it is fascinating that when we survey students, 96%, it's the highest survey item ever for the past 20 years, say, my parents care about my education. It right. doesn't matter whether from downtown LA, Chicago, or in Rome, Maine, it's got the same responses. Go ahead, Ron. I, I think that uh, that's a great point too. I think also uh, speaking from an administrator type setting role is that we have to really kind of realize too, I think sometimes I would really much rather have that angry parent come and talk to me about 
uh, the reason why or, to, or defend the situation, but uh, that maybe an action because that begins a conversation. And so, you know, I think we have to make sure that I, I think that's a, our definition of parent engagement, parent participation. Uh, may be limited to circumstances and the yeah. stressors that are placed upon family systems today. And so uh, I, I think, how do we go about inviting parents to be involved in such a way that they feel welcome, but also maybe sometimes that entryway. I mean, I can talk about, I can think about a couple of experiences this past year where I had parents just, just hate it, just chewing me out. Yeah. But, you know, you, you have to really work on that relationship and develop and, and say, because bottom line is, I do think parents want what's best for kids. They just don't always know how to go about doing that or the way that they do that might be really off-putting to school people. And so yeah. we've got to really kind of, I'm thinking for me, I really had to figure out how do I reframe my understanding of how this parent is advocating for his or her kid. And it, it can be kind of brutal sometimes. It can be pretty harsh. And you could walk away thinking, man, I never intended to do that. But I think it goes back to our unintentional consequences sometimes pre create barriers that if we don't self-examine can further, further the community from the schools. And that's where the elementary, middle, high school divide can be too, Jante, because your question is a good one because um, I know that there's research that shows that not just student engagement might diminish over the years, um, parental engagement does too, mm -hmm. because- It does, yeah, especially like, in the high school. Yeah, 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 like parents parents feel, believe me, I was an elementary school principal for eight years, like kindergarten parents are full on involved, but by the time you start to see the parents get to fifth grade, you might see that drop off. And we had to really explore in my school, um, we really had to explore why, why would that happen, right? We want parents to be as involved in fifth grade as, as we, we wanted them when they were in kindergarten. So that school community piece was really important. And that's where we started to look at what are our after school events? What kind of ways do we communicate? I mean, I used to flip communication to parents where if we had open house, um, I remember when the Common Core was happening, the Dignity for All Students Act in New York State was happening. I actually sent out a video to parents um, a few days before open house with, a, it was just five minutes about what I, they were coming to parent teacher or they were coming to open house. And I said, you're gonna be meeting with me in the gymnasium for 30 minutes before you go to your child's new teacher. Here are two topics that we we want to be able to talk about with you because they're you know they're they're very big initiatives that are happening, um, and the Dignity for All Students Act was actually about it was our anti bullying law. So mm -hmm. when I had standing room only, and we talked, we didn't talk about the Common Core, but we talked about what what bullying is and what it's not, um, and that was a really powerful thing because parents started to ask me, "Will you send more of those videos out?" And that was a connection. And the weird thing that happened there is whenever they saw, I tried to do it like of kids and, and everything else. But when they heard my voice, I actually had parents come to me later on to say, we were intimidated to come to school, but we've watched your videos and you're not a very intimidating guy. I don't know how to take that, but you know, I'll take it for what it's worth. Mm. But hey, yes, like, I am intimidating, yeah. damn it. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you know, just, just those kind of things. It's weird what can, what can it connect mm. people. Yeah. See, this just goes to show, I told you it would be five minutes and it's been 15. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, well, I want to thank you very much for being on the show. I like, just like right now, we could talk forever. So um, I, I was just really excited to talk to the three of you. So thank you for everything you do.